how you doing i haven't done a sit down video in a minute i said you know this would be really good to do since i just recently changed careers got me a new job and i want to share with you guys about pretty much changing careers in your 40s you know transitioning to something different and just a couple of things that you know i want to share with you guys i don't have that many i'm not going to draw this out and if you enjoy this kind of content please let me know because i can definitely do like a part two of it or you know kind of elaborate a little bit more but i just want to give you guys some tip because in my last couple of videos of me sharing my last week at my job you know uh, once i mentioned that I, I got a new job and the response that i got you know this was good it was letting me know that you know i'm not the only one that's out there feeling the same way about wanting to change wanting to do something different just wanting to elevate and like especially for those you know all of us it doesn't matter if you have degrees or not because years of experience is just as um substantial as a degree because you put in that work you know what i mean you put in that work so, um, in saying all of that, I do have three uh, tips that I would um, give in transitioning into a different career, transitioning to a different job, or even wanting to just move up in your company. You know, just little things. First of all, first tip, know your reason why you want to move. You know, if it's money, if that's your reason, stick with it. If it's something because you want to advance, stick with it. If it's because you want um, to just, you know, grow in the company, you want to become more of a higher level, you want to step into management, because you can still grow within your level. You might make lateral moves, you might go up the ladder just a little bit, when we, but you, when you want to grow a little bit more, when you want to get into management, those are different levels of, you know, how you want to grow, okay? So just understand and know why you want to change jobs and what is your why okay what is your why so i'm going to give you a little bit uh, give you a few of my why so we can kind of understand so my why was one i did want more money who doesn't want more money <laughs> and two is i wanted to grow i knew i can do more and i felt like i was stagnant and i also felt like i could do when you get to a point where you can do a job with your eyes closed you're not challenged anymore where well, you can sit back for several days at a time and do nothing and then the last day you could knock it out within a couple of hours or just knock it out in that whole day that means it's time for you to move on now somebody might say well kelly if you have all that time you could be working on this working on that getting this straight getting that straight yes 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 but you know what i need to feel more because now you're starting when you sit back and you're at the job now you're looking at why am i here and then you start hating everything everyone and then it's, it's like a snowball effect so for me i wanted to move up i wanted to move up and i said you know there's nothing wrong with you know moving up a little bit you know moving into something that could possibly lead you into a further management position you know it's okay to do that while you're still doing this over here so so those were two of my whys so that's the first tip why do you want to change careers second know what your transferable skills are so if you know you're going into a position and this position is requiring you to have x y and z skills right but yet you're sitting back you're like but dang i don't got that before you cancel yourself out look at what you do know and then say hey this is transferable meaning okay let's get into it um i did not know pivot tables and VLOOKUP. I know it now, <laughs> I know it now. But for me to say, okay, I got some transferable skills that can definitely help me with learning those skills. And I might be giving a wrong uh, explanation at this point, but I'm gonna still give it to you anyway. I am very savvy with Excel, but I just didn't know those two components of Excel. So I pretty much talked my way into saying that I did know these things. And while I'm sitting here saying I know these things, I was teaching myself. So I already knew Excel and I knew it in a savvy way, but there's a couple of things I didn't I didn't know. So I taught myself via YouTube. We all love YouTube, don't we? So that was something to me that I felt like I was learning and I turned it into something that was transferable. So another, another example, um, say customer service. 
Say if you're right now, you're in customer service and you are pretty much talking to customers over the phone, vendors over the phone, clients over the phone. But now you're still go, you you want to go to a different job where they don't have customer service, but you still have to deal with say stakeholders and things like that. You can sit and say my customer service skills where I was able to um, talk, provide service, provide feedback, give them what they need. Now you can use those skills and you can transfer them over and you're going to use the same customer service skills to provide that to your stakeholders. Does that make any sense to you? So you're just trying to use the skills that you do have and just turn it around. And also one tip, say if you, you have your resume, right? You know, I have not used a professional resume builder. There's so many out there. Maybe my next go around, I may go the professional route, but I'm pretty good with um, my, my, doing my own resume. So let me give you um, another little tip before I get into the last tip. Um, say you have the job description of the new job, right? Take some of those keywords out of that new job. Now, now, I'm not saying take things that you know you don't know how to do because you will get tested. So if you get the job, take some of them key things, those certain words out of that job description and throw it in to your resume. Prime example, I'm already a very analytical person. I like to analyze all that good stuff. So my previous position was an analyst because I am an auditor. So, I took a lot of those words, analyze, analytical, um, what's another word? Compare, um, detailed, just any words that they use, I would slap it in to things that I may have done in previous jobs. So, when my resume gets through that, um, that search engine that they may have for resumes and they put in those keywords or the keywords from that job description come, guess what's gonna pull? It's gonna pull my resume because I have those keywords in there. So kind of play around in that aspect, you know, just so you can, you know, get yourself picked. And then from there, if you do get interviews, practice, practice in the mirror. That's one thing my girlfriend told me. I never did that before, but when I did it, that's when I started really nailing it and getting them second interviews and third interviews. I didn't get the job, but it gave me more confidence. I'm going off, y'all. I'm going off. Y'all want part two? Yep, y'all want part two? Let me know. And I, I'm not in HR. I'm just a regular woman who's doing this on my own. And I have friends that, you know, give me tips and stuff like that that share with me. So I'm just sharing with you guys. Now, I don't know anybody in HR. I do have a friend in HR, but she's in benefits. So that's a different beast in itself. It's not like HR where it's like, you know, the hiring piece and the um, talent requisition, if that makes any sense. I think the other talent something. That's not that. But um, but my last tip to not draw this on, I want to keep this pretty much under 10 minutes if I can, <laughs> is to never give up. Looking for a job is like having a job. Let me tell you guys something. They say it takes about at least six months to get a new job, especially if you're trying to land something that's a little bit, you know, more than what you have. It can take a minimum six months. Four to six months, six months to a year, it all depends on what the market is doing at the moment. It took me 10 months, 10 months, but I got it. I got it, and really it probably took me, I'm gonna say 10, because on the 11th month, that's when I actually started in my new um, job I was doing I was I was going on interviews three times a day, four times a week two times a day I was going on them I just thought I saw something so I looked over but I was going on interviews it was like a job sometimes I would literally take off a day of work because I had so many interviews and now we're in a, a, a time where you're not going in. So it can seem a little bit more intimidating where you're not in the office. You're pretty much in the comfort of your own home. You have your laptop up. You're sitting back and you're like, oh my God, these people are literally looking at me and I'm looking at them. But take this moment and take that time to your advantage because now you you chilling. You in your own home. You comfortable. Sometimes you're dressed all the way. Sometimes you dress halfway. I would recommend getting dressed all 
the way. When I first started out getting the interviews, I was just dressing from the waist up. You know, makeup done, blazer, you know, my shirt. But meanwhile, the bottoms, I'm looking a mess, right? But once I really did the part, got dressed all the way, you may say this is so irrelevant, your confidence just comes through. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for confidence. So that's another thing that I did that even down to the shoes. I would put on, you know, this is some loafers, you know, nothing too crazy. But I would have on my dress pants, I would have on um if I wore it depends on what um position it was and what organization and what company. Also dependent on what I had on because some particular um employers their work culture their dress culture may be business casual relaxed maybe formal you're not not formal let me not use that word maybe a little bit more businessy but you know with the jacket your blouse your skirt your slacks or whatever the case may be and some other place may be more business casual where you have on you know maybe a v-neck sweater some nice little khakis or whatever the case may be understand the culture then that let you know how you can come in for your interview because sometimes when you come in overdressed and everybody in the camera that's looking at you they run around with a blouse on or you know a shirt and they're uh um what's the contract the guys wear like a soft um soft collar shirt you don't want to be the one looking too much if that makes any sense so you want to kind of fit in with everybody make everybody feel like everybody's comfortable but it all depends. You can fill it out. You can definitely fill it out. Because I know there's sometimes some I know there's some individuals who the people behind the camera may be looking very casual, but then you come in looking the part, then they like that because you took that effort. So it's like a catch-22. You have to figure out what pretty much work. But those are my three tips for when you want to, you know, transition, change careers in your 40s. You know, you have to work a little bit harder. Because one, you know, when you're older, from my experience, they know that you want more. You know, you're not coming right out of college. You're not coming right out of high school. You know, so that eagerness from that uh, that uh, genre of individuals that, that <laughs> let me see, that age group of people is different from when you're, you know, baby boomers or X. I think we're X, right? Some of, you know, most of us are X. I forgot. I can't remember. I think it's X. I don't remember. I don't have my phone in here. But you guys understand, you know, it's different from being a millennial, a Gen Z, or being a baby boomer, or being our generation. You know, some of us, we have to just work a little bit harder because a lot of times they don't want to hire anybody who may have age on them. It all depends. It just all depends. But that is my, my tip you know, pretty much have that confidence, you know, and, and put it down what you have. So those are my three tips that I do have for you in changing careers. Know your why, know your transferable skills, and look for a job like a job. Understand it's gonna take some time. Don't get discouraged, dress the part, even if you're not going into the actual organization to do your interview and you're doing it via Zoom, doing it over, you know, Teams. Dress the part be professional as i know you will be but understand that you have to do a little bit more when you're a little up in age versus someone that may be a little bit younger than you because you know they know you want more they know it they know <laughs> so that is that if you want a part two if you want me to go and elaborate a little bit more please let me know i'll definitely do this because i i think that this is something that we should talk about especially you know I have some gentlemen on this channel. So as men and women and you know, we're in the workforce, we're not going nowhere no time soon, especially for our age group, retirement is a little bit longer. So we have to know what we want, where we wanna go and what kind of money we wanna make. In addition to that, we got these businesses and we trying to make them grow. But yeah, we still need our coin on the side. So <laughs> let me know your thoughts, let me know your thoughts. So I wanna say hey to all my new subscribers, hey to all my loyals. Thanks for hanging out with me. Catch you next video. And also, if you want more sit-down videos, please let me know. Bye. <laughs>